I am back from Fashion Island and now it's time to talk about our lamb marketing event. The Family Pig Complete Harvest course by the Farmstead Meatsmith was just awesome, fantastic, out of this world, worth every penny. I can't recommend it enough. I could probably do a whole video on my experience at the workshop. I probably won't do that, but I probably could. But if you guys have any specific questions about some of the footage you saw in the videos or just in general on the pig butchery or anything like that, I'll be happy to try and answer them. Just leave a comment down below. Now here's what it transpired immediately following the workshop. The Farmstead Meatsmith workshop just ended. I just left there. What a fantastic workshop. I cannot speak highly enough about it. It was paradigm shifting, life altering, amazing, absolutely amazing. As part of the class, each student got to make three pounds of their own sausage to take home. So I have three pounds of super high quality, awesome sausage to take. But in addition, Brandon, the Farmstead Meatsmith, gave me probably like two pounds of coal fat which is the really white lacy fat that you use for charcuterie wrapping or roasting different cuts that was a really awesome parting gift i have plans for that coal fat for tomorrow by the way when i pull that coal fat out of the cooler to take that shot a bunch of juice dripped all over my truck so might get a little porky smelling in here I heard from one of our viewers, Hans Kiestorf. Hans is the gentleman that sent us the boysenberry last fall that we planted. In addition to sending us berry bushes, Hans also leaves a lot of neat comments below our videos. On the video titled, Traveling to Vashon Island, Hans left a comment saying, while you're in Vashon Island, you really need to pick up a meadow creature broad fork. They're really expensive to ship and they're one of the best broad forks you can get. So I looked on their website and found that they have them at the local Ace Hardware store right here on the island. Guess where I'm sitting right now. So let's go get a broad fork. back on the mainland in Seattle and there's one more stop I need to make. I'm at Green Depot. In the spring when it's warm enough for us to keep our windows open at the homestead, we are going to be painting our walls among many other projects to spruce up our house. This Green Depot store is the only store in the whole entire Northwest that I know of at least that carries AFM safe coat paint, which is arguably the most indoor air quality, environmentally friendly paint we can get. And if you guys have seen my indoor air quality video I did last fall, you'll know how I feel about certain paints and indoor air quality. I wanted to pick this stuff up while I'm in town versus having to pay really expensive shipping fees on shipping paint. The paint is very expensive to ship.
I got home really late that night, but I made it home. That's the important thing. Being so inspired by the awesome workshop I had just attended, I, I just had to make some pate using that call fat that I had. I didn't have the proper cast iron terrine, but I did have a little glass dish that kind of worked for it. So I went ahead and moved forward with the pate. I didn't have liver, but Brandon said traditional pates weren't necessarily made with liver. A lot of them were just pork sausage with different herbs and spices and that sort of thing in it. So I didn't let my lack of good quality liver discourage me from making the pate. Pate really came in handy because the next day we had the Know Your Farmer event and it was really good to have a cold, nutritious food to take with us. And here's the moment of truth with the pate. If it crumbles as I cut it, it is a fail. But if it cuts smoothly, it will be a flying success. Given that I didn't have the proper terrine in which to cook this, and it's my first time, my expectations are not very high. Oh, look at that. Nice and smooth. Let's cut a couple more. Yeah. Yeah, little buddy, I think so. Success, yay. But now for the next part of the test. How does it taste? It's time to see how I did on flavor now and texture. It's really good. I give myself a B plus on this. The pate that we had at the Farmstead Meatsmith course had a little bit more flavor. We were eating pate that was made the week before from the class that went before us, and I think they had liver in theirs. We added liver in the one that we made, and there was definitely there was a liver flavor going on in the last pate, which added a really nice element to it. This is really good, but it's definitely missing that liver essence that gives it more of that charcuterie feel to it. It's really good. But there's a little bit of room for improvement on this. All right, little buddy, you ready to try it? Yeah. All right, here you go. Mmm, lemon. You like it? Yes. Know Your Farmer event, and I just finished setting up our table here with little buddy. What do you think, little buddy? Yeah, but what is that stuff? That's tzatziki. So I heard from a lot of you guys getting comments about having samples for food. Well, I wasn't really quite set up for that this time, but I did ask Tess about that. When we talked, Tess said she wanted to set up next to me, and I told her about your suggestions about bringing samples. And if you can see the crock pot behind me, Tess brought samples. So thanks guys for the suggestion. So for the table, on the left I have my stand-up tabletop sign that has our management practices and a little bit about the grass-fed homestead right there. And I also have these really cool lamb recipes. 
there's a pretty new YouTube homesteading channel called Part Time Permies, and Cindy, who is the content creator there, is married to Michael Murray, who is a certified executive chef. And Michael put together a couple recipes for us to put on our display stand so people can take some ideas with them on how to cook this stuff. Also, what I'm going to do for an upcoming cooking video is cook some of these recipes and see how they come out. So, Chef Michael and Cindy, thank you guys so much for this contribution. And next to the recipes, I have these cards with our pricing on it and our management practices so people can take this with them. It has our website on it so they know where to go if they decide they want to order. And then I have a list here where people can sign up for our email list. And of course, our video display with looping cooking videos and our permaculture shepherd compilation videos also on here. And I also brought my sales manager with me here tonight, little buddy. Are you gonna do some sales for me? <laughs> sure. Are you gonna sell some lambs for me tonight? Yes. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. I'm um, gonna sell some lambs for daddy once that I'm dead. But we can't eat wild ones. Once when they're wild, right? Right. Overall, the event wasn't a very profitable use of my time. The turnout was really, really low. It was expected that there'd be well over 100 people in attendance, but I counted in the room and it was somewhere in the 25 to 28 range. Not so good. The weather was really bad, which probably impacted that attendance greatly. So how we do on pre-sales? <coughs> Goose egg, zero, nothing, nada. Not good. But little buddy really worked the room. He was going around handing our little postcard with all our information on it to everybody who would take one. I was really impressed with his extroverted sales techniques. Mm -hmm.